Hello everyone, I have a short video here looking at a Russian Iskander missile strike on a Ukrainian train in Zaporizhia hauling logistical vehicles. This is worth a look, as this is the second long-range Russian missile strike on Ukrainian trains that we've seen in recent weeks. And these, along with a number of other missile strikes on key bridges, hint at a bit of a change in Russia's tactics. Firstly, because they're actually using their missiles to hit actual military targets here. But it also shows that Russia has taken a page out of Ukraine's book and is starting to hit Ukraine's logistical lines. Bad news for Ukraine, as Ukraine has showed that this is an effective tactic in the past. So I have some screenshots to go through here. So the one on screen now shows that this train is loaded up with mainly utility vehicles of different kinds. 11 vehicles are seen, plus one seen at the end of the video being loaded onto the train. Now, I'm not sure what types, but some of the trucks look to be Urals. You can tell because of a long nose at the front. Now, I'm not sure what these ones here are, the ones highlighted. Could these be VAB APCs, an image of which is shown here? I'm not too sure. They do resemble it, but the image quality from the drone footage isn't clear enough to tell. I do think it more likely there is a type of utility vehicle rather than a VAB. But I can't see any similar utility vehicles that Ukraine is confirmed to have. Here is a screenshot of the strike itself, so not a direct hit, the Iskander hit into the left hand side of the train. Now some people online said the dust you can see is just that, dust kicked up from the blast and this would have caused not much damage at all. But I don't think so. You can also see dust kicking up in the field above where the train is. I think what we're seeing here is some kind of shrapnel round being used. So unfortunately, it's very likely that most of the vehicles on this train are badly damaged or even destroyed. If a shrapnel round is anything like High Mars's own tungsten balls, which just shred everything. But we certainly got a side full of shrapnel from this rocket strike. Here are a few of the rounds carried by the Iskander. So you can see the Iskander missile does carry various cluster and shrapnel warheads, which I think is what was likely used to hit this train here. So unfortunately, these vehicles are, at the very least, damaged. The train's location too is bad news for Ukraine, as this is in Zaporizhia, the region of the counter-offensive, so these vehicles would have been very important in carrying supplies to the front lines here. This train was in a siding facing north. Now, on Google Maps' old imagery, this siding looks disused, but it wouldn't take much work at all to get a disused railway siding back operational again. Basically a case of clearing away the shrubbery and the bushes and the vegetation growing on it so trains can pass it and also making sure there's no cracks or missing pieces I guess. So Ukraine has clearly started using it again as a supply point during the war. Zoomed out, you can see this is now a settlement called Ukrainka which is just east of Zaporizhia. Now remember, this train was facing north and it was being loaded. So this train wasn't dropping supply vehicles off, but rather collecting them. So these could be vehicles being removed from the area of the front line to undergo maintenance and repairs. One of the vehicles though is seen moving under its own power onto the train, but that isn't a guarantee that it doesn't need maintenance. It may have been decided to move it to a back to undergo routine maintenance because of some small technical issues and stuff. Another possibility is Ukraine loads these trucks up with supplies elsewhere in Ukraine and then uses the trains to get them as quickly as possible near the front. The trucks then shuttle the supplies from the train drop off point to the front lines and then return to the train to go back and get reloaded quickly, cutting down the need of fuel for the trucks and of course, the time needed to get the supplies from the depots and the ammo storage sites to the front. But either way, even if these were Ukrainian vehicles needing repair and maintenance, they're still important vehicles that Ukraine can't afford to lose. Logistical vehicles are often underappreciated, especially compared to the flashy tanks and SAM launchers and howitzers getting destroyed. But they are vitally important. An army can't fight if it can't get supplies to the front lines. Ukraine proved that early on in Russia's failed Kyiv offensive, which failed largely 
Because Ukraine managed to cripple Russia's overstretched supply lines, Ukraine did the same in Kherson, hitting the bridges and the logistical chains so Russia had no choice but to retreat back across the Dnipro. Now, Russia seems to be doing the same, hitting Ukraine's own logistical lines, and it will very likely be effective. We saw another train hit all week or so ago, and recently, Russia has been hitting key bridges around Kupiansk and over the Oskil River. The bridges in question shown in this image here. We've also seen long-range missile strikes of Russia's hitting possible ammo dumps and storage facilities and warehouses. So this marks a change in Russia's tactics. In the past, we didn't really see much of a big focus from Russia on this, hitting Ukraine's logistical lines hard. While there were hit, of course, there wasn't really a big coordinated effort with multiple strikes in such a short span of time to hit bridges, railways and ammo dumps the way that Russia has been doing in the past few weeks. It's a tactic which will likely be successful to a degree, not least because of Ukraine's lack of SAM coverage. Ukraine is a large country and the SAMs have been provided can't cover everywhere. There are going to be gaps that Russia can exploit. This incident here was over 40 kilometers to the front line and Russia, remember, had a spotter drone in the air monitoring the railway. Now, the fact that Russia knew a train was going to be here around this time is interesting. It could be just a fluke. The drone prowling this area, spotting the train and quickly calling in an Iskander strike. Or it could have been a planned strike, which possibly means Russia had some information from inside Ukraine about its movements. Who knows, I'm not going to speculate too much on that. But no doubt, this was a good strike for Russia. Iskander has a 500 kilometer range, as roughly shown here. So unfortunately, it's doubtful Ukraine will be able to hit one of the Iskander launchers. They can be launched from pretty much any of Russian occupied territory in Ukraine within the circle, as well as areas in Russia itself, so Kursk, Belgorod and Rostov, and even occupied Crimea. The Iskander can travel at over 7,500 kilometers an hour. So even from its max range of 500 kilometers, the Iskander could reach its target in about four minutes. Russia has around 160 of these in service. Now, before we finish this video, I'm going to play a combination thank you message from a 3D printed factory who we raise money for, and a request for a new fundraiser for them to buy insulation for their um, to buy insulation for their 3D printed factory. These guys do amazing work and very important work: 3D printing drone parts for Ukraine. Thanks to everybody who donated in the past and everybody who's going to donate. Thanks so much and take care everybody. Hello to everyone. This is Engineer Volunteers Group again. In the end of this video we introduce some members of our volunteers family. Please watch to the end. And first of all in this video we wish to say thanks Mr. Sachimimus for your great help. Thank you so much. We really appreciate uh, Small report. From previous collection, we buy five printers, approximately 100 kilograms of different kind of plastic, some necessary tools. And one of the printers was sent at, like donation from United States, some guy who watched the video. Thank you so much. Um, we need your help again. Uh, we need to prepare our warehouse to the winter season. We need add insula insulation and heater system to continue our work without a break. And of course, because of we have more work at printer and order from the army, the plastic we used increased several times. Now it's approximately 160 kilos per month. It will be more. Um, I need add some information. In time we prepare this video, uh, Dmitry received the call. Dima, please explain. This is Dima. He is an engineer which Hello. work in this warehouse, I care about 10 printers. Uh, please explain the call. Uh, I got a call from our friends from Spec Ops. They lose their drones and uh, for a good job on the front line, they need uh, new drones with thermal sensors. So we be appreciate if you can help uh, to collect uh, for buying it, those. Yeah, it's one more request for, for you. Thank you so much. All who donated, 
share it, this video, like it. Glory to Ukraine. Героям слава! Hi there, my name is Dmitro. I am an engineer from volunteering engineering group from Kyiv, Ukraine. I would like to express my gratitude to your guys. Your donates, likes and reposts are very important for us. They make us stronger and more powerful in defending Ukraine. Also, big thanks to Mr. Sachimimus for your great help. Much love from Ukraine and Slava Ukraini! Hello, my name is Sergei. I am from Kyiv and I am from Engineering Volunteers Group. I wish to say thank you for Mr. Sachimimus and for all those who donate for help our army and support Ukraine. Thank you so much for support and glory to Ukraine. Hello, my name is Sergei. I am a volunteer. I am a member of Ukrainian engineer volunteer group. Thank you for supporting us and the Ukrainian army in the fight against the Russian terrorist state. Special thanks to Mr. Sochimimos for this great support. Stay with Ukrainian. Hi there. Hello from Irpin, Ukraine. While printer is working, I want to say thanks for Mr. Sochimimos for his great help. We are grateful to you. We are grateful to everyone who support Ukraine at this time. We are grateful for your repost, like, and of course for your donation. Thank you. Glory to Ukraine.